Welcome back to episode 52 of the No Money Spent. So as you guys can see, we finished up the Extreme Program. We unlocked the 99 Josh Donaldson. And by the end of this episode, or at some point, we should also be unlocking the 99 Andrew McCutcheon card. So for today, we're just pretty much going to be going over the Extreme Program, kind of our thoughts and maybe some tips and stuff like that. I'm not going to be opening up any packs because we have so many. I literally have 200 plus packs that if I go over like all the content and then open up the packs... It's going to be like 45 minute video. So we'll save the packs for our next no money spent. But we do have a lot of packs that we will be opening up. So again, Josh Donaldson, that's the card we just unlocked. So just going over the extreme program really quick. Now you get obviously four diamond cards along the way. All 99s, they're all pretty good in my opinion, and we definitely will be trying them out. The last thing that I pretty much finished up to get this program done was getting Carrie Wood to Parallel 4. So there's definitely some ways you want to approach that and try to get it done. But just going over Carrie Wood, he has 116 hit per 9, 125k per 9, 62 walk per 9, which might be the low on this card, but I do like his pitch repertoire. He has a 99 fastball with outlier, the 84 slurve, the 77 12 6, 83 changeup, and the 91 cutter. So hopefully whenever we use him in ranked, he's going to be a solid option for us. And then you do get a lot of other packs too along the way in this program. Some home run derby, all-star game, toolbox, all that stuff. But the other one, the other 99, a roll this Chapman. Probably going to be the best lefty in the game. 125 hit per nine and K per nine has 82 walk per nine, which is pretty good for this card. 99 fastball with outlier, 89 slider, 88 circle change, 95 sinker. So for bullpen option, probably the best. Actually, maybe. I don't know. Billy Wagner just dropped two. I have to take a look at that card. But Chapman is definitely a top card in the bullpen. And then some more packs and stuff you get along the way. The 99 Robinson Cano. Has 125 contact versus righties, 104 versus lefties, 90 power versus righties, 112 versus lefties with diamond tier defense, 61 speed. Looks like a really good card to me. And then the last one being in the main reward, 99 Josh Donaldson. He has 109 contact versus righties, 111 versus lefties, 114 power versus righties, 125 versus lefties with diamond tier defense and 53 speed. So he can only play third. And I guess if you have George Brett, I mean, George Brett can play multiple positions, but Austin Riley, another one that can play multiple positions. Who else that just dropped? That was a third baseman, Chipper Jones. So there's definitely a lot of like primary third baseman out there right now that are very good. I don't feel like this is a card everyone like they, they need to get him because there's so many options at third, but we got him and let's go over the actual program a little bit. So the missions is probably the easiest part of this. Once you unlock Kerry Wood, you just got to get him to at least parallel four. But if you can't do some of the moments, then you will have to parallel five him. We'll come back to this part. But I do recommend you either do the moments first or extreme showdown. Now, extreme showdown is pretty tough. I'm not going to lie. I did this one second and it definitely took me a good amount of tries. So just taking a look at the extreme program. You got to face, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mini bosses pretty much. And then the final is versus Randy Johnson. Now, I don't remember the order of pitchers, but you face Zach Grinke in the first one. And then Al Leiter, Ryan Helsley. And then I think it's Mike Messina. And then it's just a whole bunch of lefties, right? You got Chapman in one of these. Chapman's, I think at the end i think there's another lefty you face i feel like i'm missing a player but i don't remember who it is you face chapman nolan ryan and i don't remember who the player i'm missing is but i will say when you are doing extreme showdown the most important thing is to be patient almost to the point where i probably recommend you guys just waiting until you get two strikes i know when you face like chapman and nolan ryan towards the end their control is a little bit spotty and they could walk you so you want to try to take advantage of that because sometimes you get some good solid hits or swings on the ball and it just goes right to the outfielder or the infielder. You know, you know how hitting is, <laughs> you know how hitting is. So you want to be extremely patient and then you want to pick perks that benefit you for having like a two strike count. 
So that's kind of how I approached it. Now, I will say, I think overall, this probably took me around 20 tries. But the thing is, I struggled the most on the first three. You know, once I was able to build my team up and move along, it got a little bit easier. But Grinky and Al Lider, I fell those a few times. Ryan Helsley is the one that gave me the most trouble. So really quick, I just went through the draft and, you know, advanced towards the end so you guys can see the pictures. Grinky, Al Lider, Ryan Helsley. This is the one that gave me the most trouble just because you only have five outs and no one's on base. So you, you don't have that much to work with. I probably failed Helsley like 10 times but after i got past helsley i think i got towards the end one time and failed and then i the second time i did it but the first three were probably the the attempts i failed the most on you got mike messina which this one's not really that bad because it's only two runs and then grayson rodriguez this one is the player i was missing but rodriguez kind of tough you got six runs and 20 outs plenty of outs to do it and you pretty much have a free runner on base but yeah, Grayson Rodriguez, I feel like he has a good motion and it's kind of tough to hit. And then again, with Chapman and Nolan Ryan, this is where you want to be extremely patient and try to build up the pitch count. You should be doing that with every pitcher, but especially the last two because they also are on Hall of Fame. You know, the difficulty goes up as you progress. But with Chapman and Nolan Ryan, they will walk you if you take pitches. So you want to take advantage of that. And then hopefully, you know, you get some good solid hits along the way. But again, I probably recommend trying to get to two strike counts and going off of that. So like I said, I failed Helsley so many times, but the one time I got to Nolan Ryan the first time, I, I failed it. And then the second time, I, I pretty much finished this off and got to Randy Johnson and beat Randy Johnson. So once you get to Randy Johnson, you should have 21 runs. So you need five runs in 25 outs which looks very doable uh randy johnson is still very tough to hit on hall of fame and i think when i was doing it my first 10 batters got out so i was kind of getting nervous a little bit but then we were able to draw some walks and finally finish it off but extreme is really difficult for this showdown and it's definitely going to be pretty tough now going back to the program you also have the moments now i will say the moments are very interesting because i only struggled on two of them or maybe three of them, but the rest I literally did on the first or second try. So for Griffey, I think it took me three tries, but we were doing like quick resets, but eight home runs, eight games. I really don't think this one's that bad. Kerry Wood for strikeouts, this one, we did it on our first try. I think it's really easy. And I think all the pitching ones are really easy. And for this one, you just want to keep it very simple. And I say this for every pitching moment. You just want to alternate with a high and in fastball and a low and away change up, or I guess an off speed pitch. Like with Kerry Wood, you can slow, you can throw the slurve if it is a right handed batter, but that's all you got to do. High and in fastball, low and away off speed, high and away fastball. Keep alternating. You'll be able to get the 20 strikeouts. Carlos Delgado, 10 total bases. This took us, I think, around like 15 tries. You pretty much have to hit two home runs and a double which is not that easy but you know you just got to be kind of persistent with this one so the next one don't call it a comeback you got to come back from seven to one uh this one's pretty difficult i think this one took me like 50 tries no lie like this one definitely took us a long time and there was many times where i had runners in scoring position even the winning run on base with like bases loaded and i would just hit it right to you know a player and get out so it sucks when that happens i definitely could have done this within like 10 tries we got unlucky in some of our at bats but this one again you got to be patient and you got to look for good pitches um who are you facing in this one you pretty much will face right-handed hitters because this is versus the phillies so if you really want you can stack your team up with left-handed hitters and you know just try to attack it that way but this one definitely took a while for me and then getting the offense going early hitting back to back the back home runs before getting it out you just have to hit three home runs before getting it out but this is the one that took me the longest i think i think this took me 100 tries no lie like this one is the one that i was just stuck on you know but the rest of them i pretty much did on the first try shohei is a unicorn you got to get two home runs and 13 strikeouts Again, for me, the strikeouts were very easy. Hitting two home runs. You have two games to do this one. The first game, you're purely hitting. I managed to get it done in the first game where you're just hitting. So I had two home runs in that game. And then the second game, you're pitching and hitting. So this one, 
You just got to get the two home runs. I think once you get the two home runs, the rest is easy. And then the next one can't hit the missile with Chapman strike out 10 batters in five games. You can't give up a hit, which is probably the hardest part. And you can't walk two batters or give up a run, obviously. So for this one, um, this one I did on my first try. Again, just go high and end fastball, low and away off speed, alternate it that way. I think the hardest part is not giving up a hit, obviously, because you have to do it in five straight games. But the strikeouts are, I think, pretty easy to get done. I don't know. We, we were getting it done pretty easily. But you're pretty much playing like four or three inning games. And then I think one of them is just one at bat. So you got to take advantage of that. I also walked the batter on the last in the last game and I thought I lost the mission. <laughs> but yeah, you just can't walk two batters. So this one again, just alternate the high and fastball low away. I think he has a, is it a circle change? Yeah, I think it's a circle change. Just alternate those two. If you're facing a lefty, you can throw the slider too. Rally time, enter a game down four in the bottom of the eighth inning with Edwin Diaz pitching. So Edwin Diaz, he has, I think, pretty good per nines, and this is an all-star. I actually did this one on our first try, but I don't think this one is easy by any means. Um, since you're facing Edwin Diaz, you can use a lot of left-handed hitters, you know, because you're facing the righty pitcher. But this one, you know, I think you just got to be patient as always and look for good pitches to hit. I think I ended up walking this one off, but... Yeah, this one is definitely not that easy. And then can you defeat the Devs God Squad? This one, you're going into a three-inning game, pretty much the last three innings of a game. It's on Hall of Fame. You're down by two. This one really depends if you can hit Hall of Fame or not. But we also did this one on the first try which uh, was kind of surprising because, again, you're down two runs. I don't remember if you're facing righties or lefties in this one. I think there is a mix of both, but it being on Hall of Fame, you know, pitchers, they're more likely to throw balls. So you want to be patient again and, you know, take pitches. That's pretty much the theme of extreme. Be patient and take breaks also, you know. If you fail a mission, I know the natural instinct is just to go right back into it. But sometimes you just keep failing and failing and failing and it kind of gets to you, right? And you want to give up. Just take a break, come back to it maybe the next day or skip it, go to another mission. But with extreme, you know, I think the main thing is just being patient, looking for good pitches and taking your time with it. You know, not everyone has to get it done day one. I pretty much took a week to do it, but that's because I wasn't doing it every single day. I was trying to take breaks too. Not that I was like failing the moments. Like I said, like with this one, I only had trouble with two of them and maybe you can include delgado but that one compared to the don't call it a comeback and getting the offense going early was nothing and then the last one is the machine is a dual threat so you got to pitch two innings hit a home run strike out a batter and do not give up a hit so i think the first time i did this i gave up a hit to the first batter but the second time we were able to get it done right away um i think the main thing for this one is hitting the home run obviously there's two different games and i think you're just pitching in one of them yeah you're pitching in one of them where you're pitching the last two innings the striking out the batter is the easy part it's just obviously not giving up the hit and then in the second game you got to hit the home run so you know these ones they definitely could take some time but most of these are on veteran or all-star difficulty which the pitch speeds for that aren't that bad and then obviously with Hall of Fame, they're a little bit more of a challenge. But that is pretty much summarizing the moments. So I think what you can end up doing is I think seven of the moments and then you can parallel five carry wood or you can do all the moments and then only have to parallel four carry wood. So that's kind of up to you. It also depends if you struggle on the moments or not. But obviously, if you choose to parallel five carry wood, it's going to take a little bit more time. Pretty much once you unlock either the moments or do all the moments or the extreme showdown and get 15 points, you want to go into the conquest and use carry wood and just use them every single game. So with this conquest, the way that I did it, there is 15 games you have to play and then there is a steal fan phase you have to steal at least 9 million fans. But the initial thing is, is you pretty much have to capture a stronghold every turn for the first five turns. So the way I started, I went to the Rockies and then I went to the Diamondbacks and then the Pirates. I know it's a weird order. When I first was thinking about doing this, I was going to go Rockies, Diamondbacks, pirates and then giants but the giants they had a lot of stronghold territory you know towards the end where like if i tried to sim there i wouldn't be able to complete it 
So we did the Rockies, the Diamondbacks, and the Pirates. And all those games were on All-Star. And then I played the Mariners on turn four. Or maybe, I, no, I think I played the Brewers on turn four and the Mariners on turn five. So I moved my fans pretty much back up to play the Brewers and the Mariners. An easier way to do this is just to go Mariners, Brewers, and then go down to the Rockies, Diamondbacks, Pirates. I think those are the five easiest teams probably to play, you know, unless you can get to the Giants. Now for the Steel Fan Phase, I played one game on Legend, and I played the A's, and then I played one game on Hall of Fame, and I'm pretty sure I played the Nationals. So those are the two weakest teams, I would say, in this set. Now, you don't have to play on Hall of Fame or Legend. I just did that because I'd rather get it done in two turns than three turns or however many turns it takes for you. But you definitely want to do the Steel Fan Phase within the first, you know, two, three turns to get that out of the way. And it's going to help you with the territories. So there is a good amount of packs here also, which I don't probably have the screenshot for the hidden rewards and all of that. But it's definitely worth it. And once you complete this board, you get a home run derby and all-star game pack, which is pretty nice. And you obviously get those while completing the program too itself. So by doing the extreme program, you will be getting at least two home run derby and all-star game packs. But yeah, that's pretty much the extreme program. It definitely, uh, it took us a while just because I wasn't really playing every day either. But the last thing we had to finish up was the parallel four carry wood and you know we pretty much were doing that through the the conquest and then i think i played one nine inning game to to top it off right there so the next thing we got a new program and right now actually you can do this collection too so i will say one thing i don't like about this program is they use the same collection and back-to-back -back program so if you're doing the extreme program you can collect these guys for 30k xp that's nice right but if you collected these in the previous program, you can't collect it again. So for me, I ended up collecting Wood, Chapman, and Cano in the previous program, which makes me miss out on 90K for this one. So for me, they've never done the same collection in back-to-back -back programs. So I was thinking I might as well get the XP for the last program and max that program out, which is what I did. And then they dropped this here. But if you collected them in the last program, you can't collect them now. So I pretty much miss out on 90k XP, which I rather have had it on this program than maxing out, you know, the last program. But we will be able to get the 30k XP for Josh Donaldson, which I think is pretty nice. And then we also did the Grasshopper Conquest, which gets us another 30k XP. This is only five games, so very easy. Um, anything special with, with the rewards? No, nah, you know, just pack bundles. Uh, balling is a habit show packs, you know the normal and then I don't think anything else that really dropped with the program But there is some good rewards here. You got Eric Davis and then the boss is Billy Wagner Nah, I think Chapman's better. I think Chapman's better than Billy Wagner But Billy Wagner is still a really good lefty bullpen arm You know if you have both of them, you're pretty much set with the lefties You got Chipper Jones really really nice card right here can play shortstop which I think everyone is excited about <laughs> because there's so many good third basemen, as we mentioned. But Chipper Jones really good against lefties, and he's still very good against righties. And then Lou Gehrig, you know, a nice first baseman right here. I honestly think once I get this program done, I kind of want Lou. But we also have a good amount of first basemen too, which makes it difficult to kind of play him. But Lou Gehrig looks really good overall too. So those were the bosses. So really quick, we do got to get, what's his name? Andrew McCutcheon. Now I have to open up at least one of these packs to finish that off. But if you guys can see, we have so many packs to open up that we will be opening these up in the next episode. But I think I need to open up one of these legend and flashbacks really quick because I need Jim Palmer. So we're going to scoop that card really quick and then go to our collections and unlock this Andrew McCutcheon card. So now we have all the awards. We pretty much had everything else. You know, we were working towards that. And then Takashi series, we just picked that up also. We picked up Ozzy Smith. I don't think I locked anything that was too expensive. Hopefully not. Even future stars, we have a good amount of them. We are at 37. So we're pretty much set. Now, we were pretty much collecting these cards along the way. Keep in mind, I also missed a month of the game, but we did get a good amount of stubs. And now we got 99 Andrew McCutcheon, another retro finest card. This card looks really good. I don't know how many of you guys have unlocked him, but if you guys have, let me know what you guys think about this card. 
and if he was worth it. This being a big collection and him being probably what, 2 million plus thugs, it's never really worth it. But still, you know, if this card does numbers for you, then I guess it is worth it. But he has 116 contact versus righties, 125 versus lefties. 106 par versus righties, 115 versus lefties, diamond tier defense, 87 speed. Nice five tool player, and we are going to unlock that also. So I guess another nice addition to the squad right here with Andrew McCutcheon, and we definitely will be debuting him this week to try him out. I guess we also get 10 packs, so yeah, we will have a ton of packs for the next episode and all that. Now, really quick, um, pretty much everything I opened up in our last pack opening, which we had a lot of packs there. I think we had 150. Our next pack opening is going to have 200 plus, but with 150 packs we opened up, I sold all the diamonds that I got and yeah, we had Ron Halsey. We were selling those. We were buying the, the classic cards and the flashbacks from this program just to do their missions quicker. But what else? Yeah, this is where we're selling some of the diamonds and pretty much everything that we had that was kind of duplicates so we made a good amount of stubs you know in that last episode we pretty much went i think i think we started last episode at like 300 or 200k stubs we got up to 800k and then i'd put in some more orders for investments so jt real muto um if he ever goes through i think he got upgraded to diamond spencer strider got upgraded to diamond so if we ever get those orders that'd be nice luis castillo and Zach Gallen, which didn't get upgraded to diamond, I don't think, but he has a he has an 84. So we have a lot of players that we're kind of invested in. And if any point, you know, these orders go through, we'll make even more stubs, which is always nice. You know, that's kind of what we want. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at with our marketplace and all that. But with the updated schedule, we'll have some new BR rewards, which I don't even know if I'm gonna play the current BR. I haven't done that yet, but I do really want that Volpe card. So we'll have to see. Uh, ninth, we have August monthly awards. So something that we have to grind a little bit for. And then Conquest and the next featured program on the 16th. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Let me know what you guys have been working on. Let me know if you guys have finished up the extreme program and overall what you guys thought about it, how difficult it was. If you guys like the cards, all that stuff. Our next no money spent, which might be tomorrow, we're going to open up all the packs that we have accumulated. It is a lot, but we got to go through that. And then hopefully we'll probably get up to a million stubs after opening those up, to be honest. So yeah, stay tuned for that. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, jump like in the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'm out.